I mean, extremely emotional language being used there, and, and rightly so. I mean, it's extremely devastating to hear those mothers recounting losing their children, children which have been underground now and held hostage for a month today. Um, Elon, when you listen to things like that, that must uh, distress you enormously. But why do you think it's so that the world keeps focusing mainly on the children of Palestine and seemingly not standing up for getting these hostages released? Heartbreaking, isn't it? You know, every day that I come to the defense ministry to do these interviews, I cycle past the protests of the hostages' families just outside and well up every time there are over 30 children hostage in some dark tunnel being held by armed gunmen with Kalashnikovs. There are children there who are literally orphaned because Hamas murdered their parents in front of them and took them in. Um, now, when we look at the Gaza Strip, that is the main humanitarian question on our mind, the fate of the 240 plus hostages who have been held incommunicado for a month, for a month without any access to the Red Cross. We don't know whether families are together, have been torn apart, what they've been fed, whether the elderly have been given medication. We know that Hamas is a brutal, bloodthirsty terror organization that raped, murdered and slaughtered their family and uh, neighbors before abducting them into the Gaza Strip. And we expect the world to rightfully demand their immediate and unconditional return and absenting effective diplomatic pressure to bring them back. That's why we're going in. We're not waiting for the UN to send a fax to Hamas to ask them to give our hostages back. We're going in in order to free them and to make sure that Hamas can never hurt our people again. And uh, Can you uh, reiterate what I think is Israel's position is that there is no question of even considering a ceasefire until those hostages are released. Am I right on that? There will be no ceasefire that leaves our hostages in Gaza and Hamas in power. I mean, as we speak, my understanding is that uh, people in northern Gaza have been given four hours to evacuate, once again being told to get to safety in the south, um, talking of very small humanitarian pauses to potentially try and get aid to civilians who need medication, food. Uh, I mean, what sort of steps is Israel taking other than these measures that we've heard announced to make sure that there are as few civilian, civilian casualties as possible? Civilians in northern Gaza have actually been given three weeks to evacuate the north. It's been three weeks since Israel issued that warning for them to move south temporarily for their own safety. And most of them have done that. The last figures I saw were as of 1.1 out of 1.1 million residents in northern Gaza, only 100,000 remain. But let me tell you what Israel is doing to keep civilians safe, because it really is fair to say that the IDF has made greater efforts than any army in the history of warfare to keep people safe. First of all, three weeks notice to get out of the way. It's fair to say we've surrendered the element of surprise and put our own troops at risk. Our soldiers have made 20,000 individual phone calls to people in Gaza, telling them to move. We've dropped 1.5 million leaflets. We've given over 10 million text messages and recorded messages urging people to leave. And we've opened at least three humanitarian corridors, one of which this week was attacked by Hamas. Hamas terrorists fired mortars at the Israeli soldiers who were facilitating people moving south. Now, let me tell you what the absurdity is. In every war, the international community and UN institutions make maximal efforts to get civilians out of harm's way. That is their responsibility as an international community. And this is the only conflict that I'm aware of where Israel is being condemned by UN agencies for efforts to get the other side civilians out of harm's way so they won't face the consequences of the danger that their leaders have put them in. You know, the fighting in northern Gaza is going to get very dangerous. Just yesterday, we exposed uh, rockets inside a mosque, tunnels that literally went through people's living rooms. We've shown how the main Hamas headquarters is located underneath the Shifa hospital in Gaza. These are all war crimes, and those are all legitimate targets. And so we're asking people to get out of the way, doing more than any army in history to get them out of the way so we can go after the perpetrators who did October 7th and make sure they can never hurt our people again. Uh, Elon, uh, I, I kind of struggle to see the difference between a humanitarian pause and a ceasefire, but nevertheless, both Joe Biden and now our Prime Minister Rishi Sunak are uh, stressing there is a difference, uh, and they are calling for humanitarian pauses uh, in the bombing and the shelling and the fighting uh, to get uh, some victims to safety. Uh, is there any chance that uh, Israel would agree to these so-called humanitarian pauses? 
there will be no ceasefire. We're going to continue with our campaign to destroy Hamas in response to the so, October uh, sorry, 7th sorry, massacre. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, uh, are, but, but, you, are, you then, are you then categorising uh, a humanitarian pause as a ceasefire? Because I'm damned if I can see the difference. The Prime Minister said yesterday, if we're talking about tactical pauses, an hour here, an hour there, in order to let humanitarian aid in or let our hostages out, that is something we would consider in accordance with the operational circumstances at the time. But we'd be talking about minor pauses to facilitate the provision of humanitarian aid. I should add, Israel at the moment is thumping Hamas in the north of Gaza. Aid is entering the Gaza Strip through the south of Gaza, and that's where the main humanitarian zone is. There is simply no contradiction between thumping Hamas in the north, letting humanitarian aid in in the south. And in fact, we've been doing both in recent days, thumping Hamas harder and letting in more humanitarian aid through the Rafah border crossing with Egypt. Uh, Elon Levy, thank you very much for your time. Israeli government spokesman there. Uh